We've been told that we live in a world of scarcity. We've been told that for the environment to flourish, the economy cannot. And for humans to thrive, animals must suffer. We've been told that we live in a zero-sum game and that the free market or greed is to blame. If you had to look at the world's food system, it's easy to understand why many have this view. Some 700 million people go to bed hungry every single night, many of them children, and many on this continent. While what we eat requires 70 billion land animals and over a trillion, that's a trillion with a T, marine animals. For these animals and people, this isn't the free market. It is the opposite. When it comes to our food, <laughs> you know, your only options up until now have been a mouth-watering steak or tofu, lamb or lentils. And after 10 years of telling millions of South Africans to eat less meat and more plants, I realized you can't mess with our bris. You can't mess with our shushinyamas. In fact, don't touch a German's bratwurst or an American's Big Mac. For many, a social gathering is not complete without some meat on the fire. And for others who cannot afford meat, they aspire to eat more. Eating meat is at the culture, is core to nearly every single culture but we cannot continue to go on, on the same way. I sometimes go to a braai, and I'm seen as a chop with my veggie burgers instead of the lamb chops on the fire. I had to change my approach. Instead of this, I said we should be eating more meat, cultivated meat. So we started something, Africa's first cultivated meat company where we want to make beef, but at no cost to the cow. That's a win-win. And it all starts with a single cell. Okay, it starts with a few thousand, but it still starts with one single tissue sample harmlessly gathered from a cow. We then take those cells and put them in the same conditions that are found in the cow's body, the same conditions that are in your and my body, because we're all mammals, I think. We then feed those cells what cows eat, carbohydrates, amino acids, vitamins, nutrients, basically grass, and keep it at 37 degrees. I think after a pandemic, we all know what the perfect or correct condition or temperature of our bodies should be, because we get beeped every day. This all starts the process of proliferation. It's the same process that makes you and me and Daisy the cow grow bigger, exponentially. It's kind of like compound interest, but it's happening in your body. I compounded a bit too much interest in this body of the lockdown, but uh, that's another story. Well, then what? Meat is more than just cells. We need that other key ingredient, fats. It's that ingredient that gives you that mouthfeel, that taste, and gets you coming back for more. Luckily, we can cultivate our meat with muscle and fat at the same time. We brew it pretty much in the same way that you make beer. And to give our meat body, we have to attach it to something, some type of framework, well, what we call a scaffold. And after about three or four weeks, we were able to uh, harvest that meat and create the burgers of the future. We use something called a bioprinter, basically a 3D printer, but with muscle and fat to create the form that you guys know and love when it comes to your burgers and sausages. 
But this process is far too expensive. But before I get into that, I want to give you a quick backstory. I was having a coffee with a friend the other day. I ordered a cappuccino with oat milk, and uh, he ordered a cappuccino with dairy. The waitress, when double-checking the order, pointed to him and said, normal, and pointed to me and said, the other one. Now, I don't want to be reminded that I'm not normal every single time I go for a coffee. I am a bit odd, but that's not what I want to hear when I, when I grab a flat white. Anyway, when the coffee arrived, not only did I have to pay more, get told that I'm not normal, but I didn't even get any latte art, and he did. Am I right? His coffee had a heart on it. Mine had nothing. Now, I know that's probably the most vegan thing you have ever heard anyone say. But these insignificant costs, and these costs of being not only monetary, but being outside of the mainstream add up. It makes it extremely difficult for an individual to make a shift and reduce their suffering through diets in an economy where animal products are the mainstream. The cost of compassion is too high. We shop on price, taste, and convenience. It's not convenience to be choosing. So how do we make compassion competitive? Well, let's go back to taste. Today's meat alternatives have come a long way since tofu. But mainstream consumers still view them as uh, less than or not as good as the conventional. They see it as a substitute, not the real deal. We want to make meat, better meat, cultivated meat. Meat that doesn't take away from the person's experience because it is meat, it's not a replacement. But even if we get taste completely right, price is important. Like my cappuccino with oat milk, cultivated meat is too expensive. The first cultivated beef burger was produced in 2013. That burger was produced by a Dutch professor, Mark Post. It cost around $250,000. That's a pricey Big Mac. The largest criticism of cultivated meat is that we will not achieve scale or price parity. And to that, I just like to quote Pat Brown, founder of Impossible Foods. Unlike the cow, we are getting better at making meat every single day. And he's right the cow is experiencing diminishing returns to scale. We are just getting started. That same cultivated beef burger that I mentioned earlier now costs about $10. So the cost of compassion is drastically falling in comparison to the conventional. Cultivated meat is getting cheaper. It's not a question of if, but when. It is inevitable. If we can do this, we have the opportunity to, do, to make something that's creative and creative abundantly, not creative destruction. We can take some cells and turn them into trillions. And this is, these trillions are created not at the destruction of the animal's life. If we can do this, we can create a new food system with a new model that makes the current one obsolete. This is creative abundance. This is cultivated meat.